Welcome to Sunday Mass with Children. We are so glad that you can join us on this adventure to learn more about our faith. This week, we celebrate the solemnity of the Epiphany of the Lord, when Jesus was first revealed to the world. Hi, kids. Thank you for sharing your amazing artwork with us, week after week on Little Faith Steps. The entries from our local and international friends are colorful and inspiring. We are always encouraged by your sharings and beautiful artwork. Keep them coming. Hi kids! Last week we learned about how we can model after the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary and Joseph. This week we are going to find out how we can spread Jesus' light to the world. Let us first begin with a prayer and a song to Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us so much. Jesus, open our eyes, ears, and hearts to receive your word, so that we can shine your light to the world. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us sing to Jesus the joy of the world. To know how you can shine Jesus' light to the world? Awesome! Let's get ready to listen to the Word of God. In Isaiah chapter 60, verse 3, the prophet Isaiah proclaimed, And nations 
shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. And in verse 6, it says, They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall bring good news, the praises of the Lord. Who are these kings that prophet Isaiah is referring to? They are probably the magis or wise men who studied the skies. They were not interested in reading the future in the stars. They were men who were looking for something greater. They were looking for the true light, the light that can guide their path in life. Let us find out what the children are learning about the Magi. That was a great game, guys. Are you ready for the online performance tonight? Why can't we call the band something cool and say the three wise boys? Don't you know our band is named after the Magi? They were the three wise men who were able to read the stars in the sky. And get this, they were the ones who first revealed the coming of Jesus to the world. Hmm. They were just three wise men who were looking for the light. What light? From the stars? <laughs> I think Sebastian means the one true light, Jesus, who points us the right path to follow in life. Well, that's a really good way of explaining it, John. Come on, let's go. We've got to rest before the performance tonight. Bye. Bye! The Magi were overjoyed when they found baby Jesus. They prostrated before him and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. These are very valuable gifts. Gold symbolizes royalty. The Magi acknowledged Jesus as king of his powerful kingdom, which cannot be destroyed. Frankincense is a precious substance used as incense in temples. With this, the Magi acknowledged Jesus as priest. Myrrh was considered more valuable than gold in Jesus' time and has healing properties. By offering this to Jesus, the Magi foretold of his suffering and death. After many days of Christmas celebrations, the solemnity of the Epiphany of the Lord invites us to stop and think about what gifts we are bringing to Jesus. And how do we use these gifts to spread Jesus' light to the world? Let's see what the children are learning about this. We were fantastic. I think we should release an album. I think people really like our songs. You guys really play your hearts out. Do you think we can become famous, the three wise boys playing all over the country? Noah, we play for the epiphany. It's when Jesus became real to the world through the Magi. We are just using our gift of music to spread his gift of love to everyone. Epiphany means suddenly realizing something. We realize now that Jesus is our light, and because he helps us to see better, we want to help others see him too. Ah! I got it. Jesus is God made man. Now that he's a part of us, we are also a part of him. We're like one big family. Now that is an epiphany. <laughs> Jesus, the gift of love, didn't just come for you and me. He came for all the peoples of the world. Jesus is the light that guided the Magi to himself. He helps us to see better. We are a part of Jesus, and in Jesus, we are baptized into God's family, the Church. The Epiphany reminds us that God gave us the gift of Jesus for the world, and we are to shine His light to others. Now let us listen to a story of a saint who did everything he could to shine Jesus' light to the world. St. Dominic de Gassman revealed Christ to people through his words and actions. Once, he spent a whole night speaking with a man about Jesus. He also courageously debated against false teachings in front of many crowds. Another time, some people challenged Dominic to throw his book into a fire to prove that he was right. Miraculously, his book didn't burn. Instead of riding on horses, Dominic humbly chose to walk barefoot from town to town to preach about Jesus. He lived in poverty, eating simple meals and sleeping on the floor. He also read the scriptures and prayed every night. To teach the truth of Christ to more people, he founded the Order of Preachers, also known as the Dominicans. It was difficult and his enemies even tried to kill him. 
However, Dominic was always joyful. His friends said that he was cheerful and kind. In fact, he was still a teenager when he sold his precious books to help poor people during a terrible famine. He often wept for sinners and did penance for them. St. Dominic de Guzman's persuasive teaching and holy example showed others who Jesus really is. St. Dominic de Guzman shone Jesus' light to others by being joyful, cheerful and kind, despite being in difficult situations. He is a role model for us to follow. Let us now sing to Jesus the light of the world. The world is searching for an answer, a ray of hope in a hopeless world. Who can we turn to? Where is our rescue? There is someone, he's the answer, he's the light and the light. For this week's activity, go to our Facebook page, Little Faith Steps. Like our page and share your works in the comments section with us. We can't wait to see them. This week, think about how you can use the gifts that you have to be a bearer of Jesus' light to the world. It is now time to set up your altar table and prepare for Holy Mass. Take a moment now to get these items and see you in a while. Oh! Don't forget to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag CatholicMarsAtHome. Let us now listen to what Auntie Estella has to share with us in one Mass Minute. Happy New Year! Have you ever wondered why the Church's year begins in November while Society's year begins on the 1st of January? Society's year is based on the ancient Roman calendar which measured time by the revolution of the earth around the sun. The church's year revolves around a different type of sun, Jesus, the Son of God. 
The most important dates on this calendar are Jesus' birth, death and resurrection. We have solemn seasons of preparation leading up to these feasts and joyful celebrations afterwards. Some dates, like Christmas, are fixed. Others, like Easter and Pentecost, depend on the sun and the moon. They are called movable feasts. Living these events every year in what we call the liturgical calendar reminds us that God is the most important person in our lives. Celebrating these feasts helps us to stay close to Jesus so that we can love Him more and more. Thank you, Auntie Estella. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, take a moment to be silent and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Holy Mass with children. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and to learn more about what Epiphany is about and how we too can reveal Christ to others through our words and actions like St. Dominic de Gassman did. There's nothing like giving God our hands and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together on this solemnity of the Epiphany of the Lord. 3rd January 2021 We offer up this Mass for all families that they will worship the Lord through all that they think, do and say. Join us in singing the processional hymn. Hello everyone and welcome to our Franciscan Friary known as Gracio, Gracio Friary here in Singapore. And today we celebrate the solemnity of the Epiphany of the Lord. And at this Eucharist, let us remember God's revelation in all our lives, giving thanks to Him for His love. As we begin, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we, who know you already by faith, may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine out Jerusalem, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising on you. Though night still covers the earth and darkness the peoples, above you the Lord now rises, and above you his glory appears. The nations come to your light, and kings to your dawning brightness. Lift up your eyes and look round. All are assembling and coming towards you. Your sons from far away, and your daughters being tenderly carried. At this sight, your heart will grow throbbing and full, and you will grow radiant. Since the riches of the sea will flow to you, the wealth of the nations come to you. Camels and throngs will cover you, and dromedaries of Midian and Ephah. Everyone in Sheba will come, bringing gold and incense, and singing the praise of the Lord. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. 
You have probably heard how I have been entrusted by God with the grace he meant for you, and that it was by a revelation that I was given the knowledge of the mystery. This mystery that has now been revealed through the Spirit to his holy apostles and the prophets was unknown to any men in past generations. It means that the pagans now share the same inheritance, that they are parts of the same body, and that the same promise has been made to them in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had been born at Bethlehem in Judea, during the reign of King Herod, some wise men came to Jerusalem from the east. Where is the infant King of the Jews? they asked. We saw his star as it rose, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was perturbed, and so was the whole of Jerusalem. He called together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people and inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. At Bethlehem in Judea, this they told him, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, Bethlehem in the land of Judah, you are by no means least among the leaders of Judah, for out of you will come a leader who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men to see him privately. He asked them the exact date on which the star had appeared, and they sent them on to Bethlehem. Go and find out all about the child, he said, and when you have found him, let me know, so that I too may go and do him homage. Having listened to what the king had to say, they set out, and there in front of them was the star they had been seen rising. It went forward and halted over the place where the child was. The sight of the star filled them with delight, and going into the house they saw the child with his mother Mary, and falling to their knees they did him homage. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. But they were warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, and returned to their own country by a different way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear sisters and brothers, today we celebrate the solemnity of the Epiphany of the Lord. And so I invite you perhaps, if you are with your mom and dad or with your brothers or sisters, to ask each other or to share, what does the word Epiphany mean? Perhaps, you know, you can talk to the person next to you. It could be your mom, could be your dad, your brother or your sister. What does epiphany mean? Epiphany means revelation, manifestation. So the epiphany of the Lord is about God revealing, God showing, God manifesting himself to you, to me and to the whole world. What do you think was God trying to show us in his revelation? We see in today's Gospel, He wants to show us that we are loved. But sometimes, like the wise men who lost sight of the star halfway, we too can sometimes easily lose sight of Him. We lose sight of this good news of God's love for many reasons. For example, our problems, our fears may block us from seeing God's love. Or how the world sometimes tries to tell us that we are only worth loving, 
when we have money, we have many toys, we have many friends, or even many likes on social media. And so what happens when we start to believe this? We forget that God loves all of us. And we start to find love in all other areas except in God. We start to find love in excessive TV, in food, excessive games, toys, social media, just to name a few. But you know what, sisters and brothers? In our first reading, when the prophet Isaiah says, the glory of the Lord is rising on you, though night still covers the earth, he is telling us that even if the night, even if sin, even if darkness, even in sadness, tries to cover God's light of love, it will fail. And not only that, we can still know that we are love even in these dark moments. Why? How do we know why? Because we know that when Jesus grew up, he, showed, he continued to show us how much he loves us by dying on the cross for you and I. But how do we keep looking at God so we do not forget how much he loves us? Well, to recognize him, constantly revealing himself to us even today through things such as creation, because they point us to God by the peace, the calm it brings us, just like that tiny little star high up in that space that pointed people from far away to baby Jesus. God continues to show himself to us in our parents, for they point us to God by the way they love each other, the way they love all of you too. And God continues to reveal himself in the church, because the church, through the scriptures, through the sacraments, and through the teachings and the faith community, points us to God's love. And that is why today is such a wonderful celebration. For the prophet Micah in the gospel today says, you are by no means least in the land of Judah, telling us that we are never too small, we are never too unknown, we are never too unpopular or too unworthy to be loved by God because he loves us no matter what. We do not need to search for things outside of God to feel loved. Now that you know this good news of God's love, what must we do? We are to share, share this good news with others. We may say, ah, I'm too young, I'm too small to share this good news. But again, we look at today's reading. If a star far, far away could lead people to Jesus, or the written words of scripture could tell Herod and those around in the palace about this newborn king. What more we, you and I, we have a mouth, we have hands, we have legs. We can make God's love known. And where can we start? We start at home. By your hugs. When mommy and daddy had a tiring day and you hugged them, I'm sure it will make them feel happy it will make their tiredness go away. By your smile. Similarly, when you smile, I'm sure even when your parents are feeling sad, they will feel happy. And by your joy, because we know that joy and many others, good things are contagious. And you know what happens when you do this, when you smile, when you hug, when you are joyful, then you become like the men who came to visit baby Jesus with gifts. You become those gifts, precious gifts to God, through your parents. And so let us today, dear sisters and brothers, on this solemnity, remember this good news always, that God continues to reveal himself to all of us through creation, through one another, through the church, and how much of how much he loves us. And in turn, we are to share this good news starting with our family. Each time you think you are too small, remember what the prophet Micah today said. You are by no means the least in the kingdom of Judah. And so in response to God's word, let us together profess our faith in this God who loves us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
Born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, your Son Jesus has come and has been revealed to the world. Gathered as your children, we place our prayers before you. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop William, all priests and clergy, that they may reveal Christ to the world through their word and deed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of all nations, that they may always seek to do what is right and good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the little children, that they may come to know the greatness and glory of the Lord and make him the king of their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here today, that we may follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit in our heart, just as the wise men followed the star that leads us to Jesus Christ our King. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold silently in our hearts and for those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you gave us the infant Jesus to be our King. We pray that you open the eyes of our hearts to follow that shining star that leads us closer to him with each step. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Praise, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favour, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, in which are offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, 
give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And so, dear children, the Lord reveals to us in many ways, and one of them is through the Eucharist. At this time, we pray. We ask the Lord to come, be more present in our hearts, to recognize Him there, that we may in turn be
be the Eucharist in our families. We invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that You are present in the most holy sacrament. I love You above all things and I desire to receive You into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive You sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace You as if You were already there and unite myself wholly to You. Never permit me to be separated from You. Amen. Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. In 1948, I was 17 plus at that time. I met a missionary who was preaching about his life in India. And he was quite touched by what he said. And so, more than ever, I wanted to go and be a missionary priest. 
In January 56, I received what we call my destination, and I was in Rome at that time still. Just I received a cable stating Aro, Singapore. That's how I learned that Singapore would be my promised land. The Archdiocese is not an entity by itself, it's people. People touched by Christ, assembled by Christ, and sent by Christ with a mission. Priests were moved according to the needs. Very often, the priest has to be transferred and to be changed. But uh, God has his view. It is the face of the people who have inspired me. I tell God, look, how can these people who had so little inside of the gospel of the church, how can these people have such a face and offer such a service? The fidelity of the couples, you know, all couples, 70, 80, still deeply in love, the care they have for children, that has inspired me. And it is there that as a diocesan priest, I find the support of my priesthood in the face and love quality of the parishioners. I think it's very important for the church to go on evangelizing, which means let people know Christ has come into the world to reveal to us that there is a God who loves us, a God who is Father to each and every one in this world, and a God who wants a relationship of love with us. And that is the very purpose of my missionary life, to help people to enter into a relationship of love with God through Jesus Christ and His Gospel. Let us participate in this historic celebration to ignite and shine with faith in all that we do. For more information, scan the QR code or visit catholic200.sg. As little children, we would dream of Christmas morn And all the gifts and toys we knew we'd find But we never realized a baby born one blessed night Gave us the greatest gift of our lives as the years went by, we learned more about gifts, the giving 